tonight, I want to invite you guys to stand and sing some praise with us.
name is Brendan, and I am the discipleship pastor here, and it's so great to be with here, with you guys here. Is it not great to worship together? Amen. We not only get to have like an extra large band with all the different pieces, but we get uh, to have all the different venues and worship times all together in one place. Isn't that great? Isn't that awesome? And we get kids in here. I've seen some kiddos dancing around. I mean, I just love the church body being all one, all together, and I think uh, this is great for that. So praise God. Thank you guys for making this happen, Andrew and, and, and the worship team. Um, it's, it's a blessing to be here. And so um, what I thought we would do tonight is I thought I would share from Psalm 100. And the reason I want to do that is because it's a psalm that really proclaims the greatness of our God and, and why we worship him and, and those sorts of things. And so I'm going to open to Psalm 100 real quick. And I'm going to read, and the title is, His Steadfast Love Endures Forever. And it's, it's called A Psalm for Giving Thanks. And it says, Psalm 100, verse 1, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen? Amen. We have uh, a great God. We have a independent God, a God that is external to all else, a God that created all things, that is above all other gods and is the one true God. We have a God who is omnipotent, omniscient. Uh, what other big words are there? Um, omnipresent, thank you. Somebody said it back there. He's love, he's truth, he's grace, he's all these amazing things, and he is worthy of all the glory. And so I'd encourage you tonight as we worship, give God all the glory. Let's pray and then we'll continue. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for tonight, for an opportunity to come together to worship, to give you all the glory, Lord. You are a great God, and you deserve all the praise that your people can give, Lord. We're so thankful to be gathered here as a church, Lord, with all of us together, all ages, all venues, all worship times together in one place. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I looked, and there before me was a throne in heaven, with someone sitting on it. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass, like crystal. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests for our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of millions of angels. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders, and they sang in a mighty chorus. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever.
what you've done or we will we'll pour out our love this will be our anthem song jesus we love you oh how we love you you are the
church. Let's give it up. Let's give it up, church. Come on, let us praise God. What an awesome opportunity to come together and to worship. And just to, sh- just to share a quick word with you guys before we go into this next section, to focus, to be able to just focus on God. Man, in Psalms 97, it says, The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are at the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries all around. His lightning... His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. Do you know that we worship this God, this almighty God, this perfect God that is powerful, that is king of all? And then it goes on to say, the heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the people see his glory. All worshipers of images are put to shame who make their boast in worthless idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. Church, do we agree with that right there? He's most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. O you who love the Lord, hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints. He delivers them with the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. We serve an amazing God, a God that doesn't put up with evil, a God that doesn't put up with sin. And if for some reason, as I look at Psalms A, we're going through this to where it says, O oh Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. And when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? in the Son of Man that you care for him. Church, come on. Who are we to step into the throne room? Yeah, he's a God of grace. He's a God of forgiveness. He's a God of love. So do you know that when we step into the presence of God, when we, when we have him in our hearts, we're constantly in communion with him because of what a son has done for us. Can we sing with everything within us, as it says in Psalms 103, like, bless the Lord, O my soul, and everything that is within me, shout out. Church, come on. We have a couple more songs left, and I want us to know that we are praising God Almighty. So, Father, we come into your presence, and we are thankful that we get to be here. Who is man that you are mindful of them? Who is man that you would love us, that you would forgive us, that you create us in such unique ways, and you delight in us being in the throne room to cry, worthy, worthy are you, God. Bless the rest of this time, God. I pray you're glorified, and in Christ's name, amen. Good and by your name. 
Redeemer, gracious Savior of my ruined life, my guilt and cross laid on your shoulders, in my place you suffered, bled, and died. You You go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. You come back with the head of my enemy. You come back in your calling my victory. Oh. You go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. Your love becomes my greatest defense. It leads me from the dry wilderness. And all I did was pray. It was worship. All I did was bow down. All I did was stay
do is worship. Just bow down. I'm just gonna stay still.
It is amazing to get the opportunity to worship our God. And when you really begin to think, isn't that true? When you, when you really begin to think about who it is we're worshiping, it just, it just can't help but get to your heart and your emotions. Um, I just, when I, I've thought a lot about what's going on here tonight. I, I think about everybody who's up here on stage and I'm like, just privileged to get to serve with you guys as I watch you before an audience of one. I, I, I do, I thank God for every, every one of our staff and volunteers that uh, serves here at Northwest, and to be part of this team is amazing. And uh, I'm glad that you guys got to be part of this night with us. I don't get to worship like this usually. Normally on a Sunday morning, believe it or not, I'm actually thinking about what I'm supposed to say. So kind of preoccupied a little bit. And so on a worship night like this, I'm kind of just like foot loose and fancy free and just feeling good about everything, you know. And so I actually get to really worship, and I think about how much I love to get to worship the Lord. And one of the reasons that we do this night is so that we can make a, what we used to call it making a CD, but now that no one has a CD player, we actually make a YouTube video. And I'm going to be using this particular YouTube video on morning walks with the Lord and evening walks with the Lord. If um, I want to sing, I come to the Father, over then, and you led us in that today, tonight, I'll, I'm going to play that song on our YouTube video. And I hope that you will too. I hope that you're going to you know, say, you know what, I need to make worship a bigger part of my life because it's a big thing in the Bible there's like a whole book of songs written it's the biggest book in the Bible by the way 150 chapters because we're supposed to worship the Lord and it changes us when we worship when we get into the presence of God it's not that we're not in the presence of God it's just we don't think about the fact that we're in the presence of God but when we acknowledge him for who he is. And by the way, if you don't uh, know how to pray, tomorrow morning, come to Saturday prayer. Brendan's going to talk to you about the Lord's Prayer. And what he's going to tell you, I'm just, this is a sneak peek, okay? Just a little, no, you should still come. Um, you begin by worshiping God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And so tonight, I want to just leave you with uh, a verse, actually a couple verses. And, uh, 
1 Corinthians 15, 50. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable put on the imperishable. He's saying that your body can't go to heaven like it is. Okay, God has to do something to it. Our bodies break down, they decay. Some of you got knee pain right now and back pain and all kinds of other pains because our bodies break down, right? They're perishable. And so he's going to tell you what's going to happen so that you don't have a perishable body going to heaven. Verse 51. Verse 51 says, listen, I tell you a mystery. A mystery was something that is revealed in the New Testament that was not revealed in the Old Testament. A mystery. We will not all sleep. Sleep means, sleep means die. We're not going to all die. Some people are never going to die. Here's why. He says, we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. The trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will all be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed the imperishable, and the mortal put on immortality, then will be brought to pass the saying, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O death, where is your victory? In the Garden of Gethsemane, it looked like the devil won. God said, in the day you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. And we keep eating the fruit. Looks like we're going to die. But what he's saying here is, what looked like this certain victory for Satan in the Garden and on the cross was actually our salvation. Because we are going to be resurrected just like Christ was resurrected. We're going to get this brand new body the moment Jesus returns. And that body that you get that's brand new will be with you, with the Lord, forever. And so he says this. The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore... My brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself to the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. And so, we're going to sing about going from a grave to a garden. We're going to sing about what Christ has done in our lives. And I hope that you're going to think about this. I hope that you're not going to just be like, well, this is kind of a cool groove, a cool tune. It's more than that. The words of this matter. If you're a believer in Jesus and you're going to live forever and ever and ever in heaven because of what Christ did for you, now we get to sing about it. Let's stand up and do that. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. There's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. And you came along, thank you, Jesus, and put me back together. It's now satisfied here in love. Sing it out, church. Oh, there's nothing.
Last one, everybody. Let's sing it out with all of our hearts. We have an unstoppable God, amen? All right, let's declare it. Here we go. Heaven thunder.
we want to leave you with a verse tonight. This is from Numbers 6, 22, 23, 24 through 26. Peter called us a royal priesthood, meaning that just as much as it, it's our responsibility to declare a blessing over you, it is your responsibility to declare a blessing over your brothers and sisters who are here tonight. So together with one voice, I'd like to start at measure, two, or at measure, <laughs> verse 23, where it says, the Lord bless you and keep you. Can you go to that one for me, please? The Lord bless you and keep you. Let's say this together. Here we go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. God bless you all. We love you all. We had a great time with you all. We hope we'll see you guys on Sunday morning. God bless.